Coming up on today's pod, life updates, plus taking shots with the governor of New York, double plus, everything nursing with very special guest, Donna Guerreros. Hit the music. Here we go. Let's get these questions from the DMs. Yep. That's what I heard. So what do you want to tell you? Hi, Mike. Hello, Frex. How you doing? Good. So for our audience, we are trying out yet another format for the show. <laughs> a fun thing, a fun thing about our show and mark my words, mark my words, get out a pen audience at home and write this down. Something about us is that we'll be out on episode 125 and still going, yeah, we're just figuring things out. There, there is something almost like meta. <laughs> yeah, we're just finding our footing. We're just figuring things out. We're playing around. Yeah. It'll be episode 120 and we'll be saying that. Yeah. I do think it's kind of like one of the fun through lines of the show yeah. is that we're always trying every week. It's like a I new thing. 17 <laughs> different shows. <laughs> yeah. We love it. We love it. Um, well, today we're going to try a little open, opening chit chat segment. Yeah. Followed by a guest. And then comment on the YouTube if you like that. And if at least one person says that they like it, I'll change my whole life for you. Yeah, it's the new format. Yeah. I think it's perfect because it gives our uh, audience, your audience, a uh, chance to check in with you and, and hear about what's going on. And, and right. uh, that's the most important thing. Let's be serious. I love when you big me up like that. Yeah. Yeah, because we need my news. We uh-huh. need the news. Yes. And then we could hear from someone else. That's right. A little, but only a little bit. Only a little bit. Yeah. Today we have such a good guest. Donna Guerrero's amazing legend. Okay, here's what's going on with me. I haven't really, I've said this only in pieces, but I haven't said it out plain that my mom has cancer. Yes. I I didn't mean to drop that. (laughs) It's okay. She's okay. It is a bombshell. I have said it in various pieces, but so that's something I've been dealing with this week because she had it two years ago, three years ago, breast cancer. And uh, she did radiation and then she had a partial mastectomy, which is where they take out a little bit. I'm not exactly sure. Either way, all was well. Now the cancer has come back. So she decided she would do the the really extreme, the double mastectomy with reconstruction from her own body, which is intense for a 70-year-old. Uh-huh. Um, so I'm telling you this because my whole week has been about being the nurse, Nurse Ratchet. Right. Okay. So I'm in the hospital. First of all, you go to the hospital, someone recovering from a major, major surgery like that. You'd think that they would put a little thought and care into feeding them nutritious foods, wouldn't you? You would, but okay. it doesn't really work like that. So let's see. <laughs> let's go through what they fed my mom. Coming out of an 11, she had an 11 hour surgery. Uh-huh. Like for an older woman, it's like a horrific experience for your body to go through. They gave her what a, a package schmuckers peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Yeah, like an Uncrustables. Uncrustables. Yeah. Thank you for knowing the name. I forgot it. And then I looked at the back of the ingredients. There's not even peanut butter and jelly in it. It's like 17 <laughs> fake chemicals. And of course, I'm on my health kick. So this is what I'm noticing now. I'm going, yeah. oh, so you just want people to be sick. Yeah. And then they gave her like a little thing that looked like applesauce and you open it and it's actually apple juice. Yes. And that's it. It's really incredible um, the way they send you home and just expect your family to do medical treatment. So like she came home from the hospital. She has four drains coming out of her. (coughs) So she's tubes going into her in four places with drains and the drains have to be cleaned. Yes. And they have to be emptied. And guess who does that? Me, nurse Frax. (sighs) And like, thank my mom's so lucky that she has kids who will help her and she has a husband who will help her. But a lot of people don't have help. And you know, my heart really broke. I never thought about what it meant to have a sick parent or be around sickness. I guess I'm so lucky that I didn't grow up around sickness, but my, my heart is broken for people that like grew up that way mm-hmm. and people that don't have help. I I agree with you a hundred percent. Like I didn't even realize how lucky I was to not like you hear, Oh, so-and-so had a surgery. Like I never, I was like, great. You know, I never thought about what that really meant. I think there is this kind of movement in um, like our generation and the generation coming up behind us. Um, really championing like being alone the idea of like mm-hmm. like being alone Wrong. being by yourself <laughs> until you slip in the bathroom yeah and then all of a sudden it's like like who's coming to help you if you like sort of lived a life and was avoidant of completely having kids or family or anybody yeah. that close to you that 
can take care of you. you That's know? actually a thought that I had. I go, I need to start having kids immediately. Really? Immediately. You have the bug? I have. Well, I've had it for uh, years, but yes, I mean, I need to have them immediately because if my mom did not have me and my brother, like we're staying over her house, getting up with her in the night. Yeah. She's screaming in pain. We have to take her to the bathroom. Like I, had to, I gave her a shower yesterday, screaming in pain. I mean, it's, it's not pretty. Like if you, if you don't have your kids to do that, what the fuck are you going to do? I know. I know. Like truly, because they just send you home. They're like, good luck. She has a wound right. vac coming out of her stomach. Yeah. It's like a tube and she has to wear a machine around her. I mean, it's crazy. It's weird, man. There's there's this like philosophy that if you don't get close to anybody, then you don't have to experience the horrors of life. No. But you this need is a, the no, thing. You need a ride to your appointment. Right. I'm telling you right now. Yeah. Okay. Settle. Settle. Whatever's available to you. Just yes. settle. <laughs> we don't have to find the perfect person. It's not, you don't have to look for your twin flame. You need a ride. You're going to need a ride to your appointment. Right. And God help me that my brain works this way. But, you know, I'm like up in the night helping my mom. Like she's screaming in pain. I'm sitting in like flannel Christmas pajamas because that's all I had at her house. And yeah. I'm sitting on the end of, of the tub, like rubbing her back. And all I could think was this is so like an indie movie. Yeah. God help me that my brain works this way. It's such an indie movie to be taking care of a sick person. Yeah. Like the, the movie just, where the person goes back home. Yeah. And is, yeah. Like yeah, a Tig Notaro like, movie. Mm-hmm, like yeah. I, I, was a big, I was a big city slicker. Yep. In hot, working in Hollywood. <laughs> a big time podcaster until her mother with whom she had great difficulty. Right. Falls ill. I didn't have great difficulty with my mom, but I'm saying that would be the plot. In the, the movie. movie. They have yeah. to have great and difficulty. And I kept imagining I was in a scene in yeah. an indie movie, especially the, the pajamas for some reason really did it for me. Absolutely. I would never wear a pajama set. Yeah. Like a button up is like ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Um, but in the movie, in the movie, <laughs> and then like sneaking outside to smoke yep. a cig. Yep, hysterical. Um, I was trying to explain parlays to my mom, mm-hmm. and she begged me to stop talking. To I was stop like, talking or to stop like, making bets. To stop talking okay, about that to her. I was like, so mom, here's what it is. You see this? I bet $10 on something that's really unlikely to happen. Yes. It's two different things. It's called a parlay. So both things have to happen. Yes. Now the first really unlikely thing has happened and we're waiting to see about the second. So DraftKings is offering to buy me out. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I could either get $10 now or wait and see and get $100 in and out. And she, she's literally goes, please stop talking. <laughs> I'm so much pain. <laughs> I can't hear about this right now. Please stop. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so you think we should cash out? She then? literally has tubes coming <laughs> yeah. out of her. And you're like, I don't know. I, if Jalen Brunson hits this three, I go, I we're don't in the money, know. baby. Oh, <laughs> this, this could be a really big bet for our family. Oh. Um, I, was I'm really caring, loving. Like I think I would actually be a good nurse, but I did reach the point where I go, uh, I could push you down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> like I did feel distinctly in my bones the moment where I kind of had had enough. Mm-hmm. What was um, it? It was the remote again. It was get the remote. It was I had been up and down the stairs three times. Each time, I, this is like being a waitress. They don't, the table doesn't just ask you for everything at once. You go, every right. time you come back, they ask you for one thing. She was doing that to me. Right, right. And I said, you know, you could get it yourself. But she can't. She can't, right. <laughs> she little wires coming but out. But in my houses. mind, like something flipped. I go, okay, I think I've had enough of this. Yeah. So I'm off today. The night nurse is there. My brother. <laughs> <laughs> is your brother helping? Is he actually he is being- helping. He's yeah. so helpful. I mean, I think with a, uh, a mother, your daughter- is able like I you know I give her a shower like my brother's not gonna, you know yeah there's certain things you want your daughter to help with not your son but my brother is so um, sweet and helpful he was reading to her uh, so tonight's my night off and then the other night I had off was Sunday I work, so I could work at the bar mm. and it was the big Bills game and guess who came into the bar none other than the governor of New York herself Kathy Hochul <laughs> Kathy she's got these. She's a big Bills fan. So she yeah. comes in. Had to, so first the Secret Service comes in and we have no room, standing room only. All the tables are booked. Secret Service is like, the governor wants to come in to watch the game. And we're like, <laughs> the owner is like, so old school. She goes, okay, well, I don't have any tables. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, ma'am, the governor wants to come in. Okay, 
well, that is amazing. Yeah. And so we ended up asking like this woman, like we're going to take half the table. Fine. She ends up coming at halftime. They come in the back door. The The big Escalade pulls up with yeah. the lights, Secret Service and blah, blah, blah. And it's just such a random thing to be doing. Why did why did they pick your bar and why did they? I think it looks good for them. to first first responders, small business, right? Because the firefighter bills, bar, New York. Right. I don't know. Just I think it looks good, mom and pop. So she comes in first thing she does. She goes, "Let's take a selfie." To you? No, to the owners. Oh, so like and like she's like, get the game in the background. <laughs> she's got these big teeth, so she talks. She's like, "Hi, I'm Kathy." So you are seeing her plan out the political strategy. So then I go, time. this I go, this is a good move though. Small business, first responder, yeah. so New York. This is such a New York bar. Um very smart. So then I go to my coworker. Uh I go, You want to take this table? I don't know. She goes, You just please take it and then I'll do all the side work. I go, All right, I'll take the deal. So I go over. I start, I take the order, I'm like, Hi, I'm Emma, nice to meet you, blah blah blah. The sister. Now, the sister is a handful. Now, she's the one to watch. What a rising star the sister is. This is the governor's sister. The governor's sister. Okay. Smoking cigs, drinking Labatt Blue, two at a time. Oh, man. Two cans. Eventually, she starts going, me, you, shots. Get them all shots. <laughs> so, I'm just ripping. So, our boss had told us, you may not, like, no employee's allowed to take shots at work anymore. I've had enough. You yeah. guys take too many shots. So, we're like, you know, you're on your best behavior for like a week after that. Oh, right. So, we right. were still kind of on best behavior. <laughs> So I go, I'm sorry, but we need a round of six shots and it's governor's orders. Right. So right. I got to do this. Right. Make them all fireball, baby. Gun to my head. <laughs> Gun to my head for my country and state. <laughs> for the governor. Right. Meanwhile, the governor wants nothing to do with this. The, you, you could tell the sister's just the wild one. Yeah. And then the kind of thing went into politics. Yeah. The sister was so fun. We're just round and round after shots. And she goes, put them on the, put them on the governor's tab. That's great. Who ends up paying that tab? The sister. Of course. Kathy's right. like, I'm out of here. Yeah. So that was fun. Um, Were people excited that the governor was there? I don't know. I think this governor is not as famous as like Cuomo. Right. I mean, imagine Cuomo came in there. They're like a dynasty, the Cuomos. Yeah. It's it, like, that's so New York. Right. Now, Kathy, 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 we'll strike a selfie. Um, <laughs> she, I think she took Cuomo's place. You know what I wanted to ask her? I said, so did you put the knife in his back? <laughs> you set that man up? <laughs> Kathy, Kathy. Don't, don't bullshit me here. Let's, let's, let's talk. One let's, New Yorker to another. Let's say a plane. Who benefited from that? <laughs> from that resignation? You, sis. Right? So, hey, I, I applaud you. Yeah. Get that guy out of here. Why not? Um, it's politics, So baby. a couple people asked to take pictures. I was thinking, like, should I take a picture? That could be a cool pic. Yeah. But I didn't. And then the Bills had the unfortunate, like, it seemed like they were going to win. Everyone was in a great mood. We have a DJ going. Then when the guy missed the kick, mm -hmm. and there was, like, still a minute left in the game, but it was clear they were going to lose because that poor guy lost, missed that kick. Yeah. She was out of there. Yeah. She was like, pull the car around. We're out. We can't be associated with losers. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know? she was head to toe Bills. I mean, yeah. she must have had a change of clothes in the get car. It, yeah, I was going to say, yeah. get those <laughs> peeling it off in the car. <laughs> Throwing uh, it out the window. Get this fucking thing out of here. Now, the... um. The Bills guy who missed the kick, mm -hmm. what kind of suicide watch is he going to be on? Was he on that night, do you think? They actually, there was something going around Twitter that he did, I he saw. Had, he had to delete his profile. Yeah, they were, the, I, I think it was the the uh, a pet adoption agency yeah. in upstate New York yeah. was like tweeting out on his behalf to like leave him alone. Yeah. He was like, he's our friend. Stop bullying our friend. He didn't yeah. do this on purpose. Yeah, but that's when you get the gamblers mad. Yeah. There's more gamblers than ever now. Now oh, that's for when sure. you get death threats. But there's also there's also a weird thing with Buffalo where they, they I don't know if you know much about football, but like they had four years in a row where they went to the Super Bowl in the 90s. Right. And there was this guy, Scott Norwood, who was their kicker. And he missed the kick the same way, exactly. right? Exactly, yeah. That's why it was, why like it was so heartbreaking. I think, or something. People were upset. So I was it was going like around, the same shit. Yeah. I was going around closing out tables going, sorry, guys. Right. Do me a favor, just hit uh, tip percentage, and then you, you can tap. <laughs> I'm so sorry to do this way. <laughs> do me a favor, just go ahead and hit that. Yep. Just hit one of those options. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 20, 20, 25, 30. Were you getting 20 at least? Oh, minimum 20. Good. Yeah. Even I mean, you make good money. Got class. Now, here's the thing. That's why they get you with the goat. When they go around with the machine where you do it at the table, you have no choice. You don't have time to think. You're in a panic. Yeah. You just press a button and Got you it. need yeah. to get out of there. Right. But if you go take the card, go to the back, ring it, give them the slip of paper, give them a minute to fucking think about the ways they're being ripped off right now. Yeah. You're not getting that big of a tip. Nope. 
But if you get them with that machine right there in the face, hey, go ahead and press one of these. So sorry about the bills, man. That's brutal. Sorry the season ended this way. Because you have to hand it back to the person to get the receipt. No, we don't you, I give a receipt. Well, but I, I feel like if like my dad would, my oh, dad would be the one that would like want the receipt back. So it's I like would, the waiter would have to see the amount of tip you gave oh, to get right. something back. Yeah, but it's also you know? like nobody wants to go through the trouble because it's like it gives you 20, 25, 30 percent. Yeah. Nobody really wants to go through the trouble of going custom. Right. Ten dollars. Yeah, right, right. Because right. once you press more than one button, I know what you're up to over right, there. Right, right, right. You're getting screwed. And what can I do? I mean, I don't care. Right. I'm in a blessed position and I feel like I, I'm actually like acutely aware of like how lucky I am that I don't need the money that much anymore. Right, right. But the time when Residuals, I- Residuals, baby. To be honest, I mean, I don't, <laughs> I'm not, my back's not against the wall financially like right. I once was. Uh -huh. But in my early, you know, I've worked, I only work one day a week kind of, I'm not going to say for fun, but. For almost purpose. for fun. Yeah, for, for fun. Yeah, I, right. Well, I like being needed. I like doing things. Right. I love the people I work with. I've worked there forever. But when I was working there four or five days a week and I needed the money and I had no credit cards and I had no savings. Yeah. I mean, I would get really upset when someone wouldn't tip a lot or not a lot. Well, they wouldn't tip what their customary is to tip. That's the question. As a consumer, do you really so want to be a scumbag and like, no, not that's text? not the question, Mike. I'll tell, no, you you the I'll tell you what the question okay. is. How much did the governor tip? That's the question. Oh yeah. I definitely <laughs> want to know. How much did she tip? 50 bucks cash. What's the percent? Um, so it sounds good. It but was, I think with all the shots from the sister, right? it was like 140 bucks, the uh, tab. Okay. So that's a good tip. It's a good tip. Yeah. And it was cash. And, you know, I got to meet the governor. Right. Which is the what real. What an honor. Yeah. Honor. <laughs> what an honor. I mean, like you put that knife right in Cuomo's back, didn't you? <laughs> Brutus over here. I got Brutus <laughs> in the restaurant. You see this? Yeah. Um, so that was my big outing, uh, my big night off. That's fun. From mom duty. Yeah. I'll go to the doctor with her tomorrow. I'm glad that, so I, I left yesterday, her house, and I was, by the time I left, I had caught the sickness. By the time I left that house, I had a bad back and a bad knee <laughs> and a bad ankle. And you go, it really is contagious being around this type of negativity, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It really does. It's it, It's like a... It's like a darkness that just like you absorb. Yeah. And it gets into your body and fucks you up. I mean, I'm joking about that. Look, she still has the same personality. I'm so lucky that the surgery was successful. She can laugh. You know, obviously I'm making her fucking cracking her up. Yeah. But, you know, by the time I left there, I had a bad knee. So. It ages. I don't it does age yeah. quick, doesn't it? Yeah. All right. Well, that's what's going on with me. That's, that was my update. And. Oh, so exciting. Now we're going to go to our next segment, Donna Guerreros. We'll take a break first. First. All right. Let's go to our next segment. You know, I'll edit that. All right. Now we're going to go. Okay. Here's the new format playing out in front of our eyes. Now we'll take a break. And when we come back, we will have our guest, nurse and businesswoman, Donna Guerreros. See you on the other side. That's what I heard. That, 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 that's what I heard. On today's pod, we have a businesswoman, founder of the Donnas, a pizza shop woman with a whimsical twist, a photographer, wife of a comedian, a working nurse, and human WebMD for comedians without health insurance. She's here. She's there. She's everywhere. She's out to dinner eight nights a week. Please welcome Donna Guerreros. Yeah. That was that was an intro. I am like a human WebMD for comedians without health insurance. Yeah. So surprised. you are not a comedian yourself. No. But you're a nurse. Uh-huh. And you're around a lot of comedians, but you decided you'd like to do something worthwhile with your life. So yeah. you did not go into comedy. You went into nursing. Well, I found out really early that the, if you're going to have two following the dreams and the art, like you're <laughs> never going to, you're never going to eat. Yeah, so you, it was better like one of us did it till one got successful. And now I guess it's kind of like my turn. You've been with Alexis for a long time. Very long time. Yeah. So did who, did he become a comedian first or did you become a nurse first? He, no, I, we kind of simultaneously, Alexis used to be in um, corporate America. He was like, uh, he was almost, he was like a VP at one mm -hmm. point. Yeah. He was like doing pretty good. And okay. then he lost his job and he was home and depressed. He got like a severance. And I kind of was like thinking selfish at the time. Like if I got laid off, what would I do? Right. And, but you know, I picked a career that's like, you know, pretty stable. Yeah. I was a nurse and uh, I was like, you know, 
if this was me, I would go like do everything I always wanted to do. I would go do photography. I would take sewing classes. And I was like, you should just go be a comedian. And that was like my dumb idea. And, and he, then he just took it and ran with it. Wow. Yeah. So you can claim that. I, I Yeah. Yeah. And I, I reminded myself of that many times as I looked in the mirror over the last 10 years, like, what the fuck? Why did you come up with? Why did you even suggest this? The comedian thing. The comedian thing. He's killing it now. He's crushing it. Crushing. Crushing. Soccer guy. Shout out to the Cooligans. Big fan of the Cooligans. Listen, I can spot a star, baby. Yeah. I'm sitting across from one. Hey, that's, see, this is why we always (laughs) invite people that will big me up. That's why that's first criteria for coming on the I tell you this all the time. I know. But okay, I need to talk about nursing because I am going, I am currently You're currently a nurse, basically. As a part-time nurse for my mother. Yeah, you literally just got your degree. Um, So let's start with the basics. What kind of nurse are you? Um, currently I'm an oncology nurse. Okay. So the cancer. So you're like my nurse. Now I have a few yes. complaints. Let's hear them. Okay. <laughs> Not from your hospital. <laughs> I told you to come to my hospital. Wait, you get, get treated for VIP. Okay. But no, you want to go across the street. Oh my God. I could have been VIP. If yeah, I told they, you they didn't, she, this patient didn't ask me where to get the surgery. Well, the next time you consult, you got my somebody on the goodness. inside. So let's start here. The female nurses were fantastic. Yeah. Okay. The male nurses are brain dead. I mean, I can't say that, but okay, I can. You know, you can't say that. I'm saying that. I mean, the boys would come in and be like, hi, honey. Now, what did you have done? Yeah. Like asking her, hi is a kite on Oxycontin, asking her what she had done. Yeah, when they're saying, you know, it was a, it's a, it was a, per, uh, listen, I'm for everybody being in anything they want to mm-hmm. be in, you know, but like, yeah. I don't know. I just. The female know. touch, I think is. It's also is the surgery your mom had is, yes. a, I'm actually, yeah, I'm kind of like shocked they actually have male nurses on that floor to be honest with you because yeah. a lot of hospitals they keep like if it's feminine female type surgery really they yeah they kind of staff accordingly they're too but they're like now where did they put your iv thing like she's like i don't know i was unconscious when these things were put <laughs> were in my they body like gen z nurses though they were younger yeah. that's that's and then they would be like nurses. okay they're girl, like hey girl kill it yeah, literally yeah, that's what they're yeah. they like 100 percent. it's just hilarious because there's actually <laughs> there was a tiktok i was watching the other day where they're like your millennial nurse comes in and it's like it was it reminded me like so much of me and then it was like your millennial and then they're like um your your gen z nurse comes in it's like okay queen what'd you have literally done they were i mean she's <laughs> so sick in so much pain she's had her whole body sliced open and they're like slay yeah okay girl we gotta brush that hair yeah no it's funny like the tiktok was <laughs> like is this appropriate the tiktok was basically like well girl how are you feeling today and it's like well i'm not feeling well what happened is your how's your emotions it's like no i literally just got my abdomen cut <laughs> <Yeah>. open like <laughs> it's nothing about my emotions i cannot wait to tell her that that's the thing we could talk for hours about so funny healthcare and yeah but yeah the Everyone's got a plan, but it's like, when are we going to do some action? Right. And that's, and that's hospital administration you know in what? a nutshell. <laughs> you know what I kept thinking? I kept thinking like the thing they're missing here is a producer's mind. They need one producer's mind on the floor to execute because they have their caring. They obviously have some type of medical knowledge. Yeah. You got into it for a reason. They're, they're right. Exactly. Like, there was a reason you, you don't this. just get. Yeah. You don't do this. If no you're not one can into execute. It. It's a, it's a lot of red tape. It's a lot of, yeah, and a lot of being concerned with kind of the rigmarole and the, like, you know, is, is the label on that? Is this, right. uh, like, you know, as opposed to being like, do you know what surgery she had? Literally. Is the label on the IV? Well, do you know where the IV is? Like, we talked Thank about you. this. Yes. Do you know where the IV is? And then when they finally found the second meanwhile, IV, you'll it have, was hidden under the first IV? Yeah. Meanwhile, you'll have, like, the 68-year-old nurse who's, like, half out, like, cigarette in her, like, yeah. on her lips. Everything. She doesn't even have to hold it while she's charting. And she'll know you're the entire patient. But, like, she's not doing, she's not, she's not writing any labels. She's not, Yeah. She doesn't um, care about J- like joint commission. Right. She's, right, right. she's, but she's the one you want. She's the one you want. Cause yeah. I, I now I'm so happy that you told me that this is like a thing because the millennial women were fantastic on it. Like they're, they're with older. It, they're They've older. been in it longer. Yeah. They've been, it's like anything. These boys were doing ketamine and I love them for that. <laughs> they were doing I'm not poppers. a hater. I'm not a hater. They were doing poppers but, four hours ago. But this is my mom's life. <laughs> so could we get it together? And thank God, you know, my mom is like had the best possible outcome, which is that the surgery was successful and yeah, she's she's going home. The person next to her, her little her little bunkie, her, her yeah, her was, roomie. Not only had um no family to pick her up. So sad. It's so it's, the friends were coming and she they've said you're we can't do anything. So she was going home not maybe to I guess to hospice. Oh wow, that's so, so sad. sad. Yeah, yeah, pancreatic. Oh, that, yeah, that's, that's And then her and my mom would just talk to each other over the curtain. 
is it? Was, and then one time, now I'm just remembering this. The nurse comes in and goes, "Can you bring this to the lady next door?" And I was like, okay, <laughs> "That was the millennial, isn't this?" <laughs> Literally, <laughs> oh, I know, it wasn't funny. It was like we're going to multitask. She here. goes, "Can you hand this to the woman next door, and I'll help your mom get out of bed." I go, "Okay," but I just, oh, she was using you, yeah, extra pair of hands, so, yeah. And I'm like, "I would have okay, been like, can you go I'm, fill her water?" I would be more than happy, truly, yeah, to I'm help sure. to assist the the, yeah, the woman roommate. Who's dying, of course, I'll yeah. take. I'll, I'm more than happy. But is that person comfortable with me popping over <laughs> with the bedpan? <laughs> right. Right. How especially, does the other woman feel? Especially you. And I pop over. Yeah. Howdy ho! I, I want to make her. I don't want to scare her, so I pop in. Yeah. Howdy ho! I'm just over here. This is. I know you don't know yeah, me exactly. Um, but my name is Emma. I'm a Capricorn. I'm gonna have a really good year. <laughs> and here's your bedpan. You are gonna have an amazing year. <laughs> Um, Look at you! You're already building good karma. Am I? I mean, helping out bed bed B. Yeah, but, but bed B. I mean, I felt I really felt for her. Yeah, I felt terrible. taking care of your mom. Of course. Look at you. Um, I hope. You, yeah, I can I see how people get into elder abuse. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You know. Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, I really found a new. Not that it's new. I always knew that I had this part of myself, but I'm able to like exercise it. I'm like very good at those things actually like taking care of someone yeah i, I just don't have to do it that often because you know thank god i haven't been around that much sickness but yeah no i mean i, I have the I touch. Think people don't realize yeah well you know you're a woman right but then after like six days i go i could push her down the stairs <laughs> <laughs> if she mouths, oh you're ready to be a nurse <laughs> she mouths off to me one more time get her the cap i mean she's getting a little fresh for someone who's she's completely better. dependent on me getting to little, find her remotes it's you know what you have to look at it like and this is what we constantly tell ourselves is that it they're exerting control. It's like they don't have much control. So it's like right. the control that they can exert. And you kind of look at it, you know, right. you look at it from that lens where it's like you're in the bed, you have the surgery, you're you're looking at your body like that you don't even recognize it. You're in horrible pain. You're half like high as fuck because mm. of this, you know, the meds you're on. So it's like the only control you have. So it's kind of like if yeah. she can yell at you about the remotes. You're right. You're just kind of like, all right. I make her laugh too, which hurts. Yeah. So it's sure. actually, it is all their abuse so, <laughs> to be this funny. <laughs> I'd be crushing at my mom's house. Oh, I'd sure. crush at my mom's. Um, Plus the was, perks that she's on. They give her per perks or Oxycontin? Oxys. <sighs> Watch she's, those. I know. I thought about... I'm shocked you haven't taken them. Well, <laughs> that was like my intro to drugs when I was like 15, was taking my mom's Oxys. <laughs> and, you know, I thought about it. I go... It, I don't even want them. That's great. Isn't that great? That's wow. such growth. I told you, you're going to have a year. Isn't that amazing? The next 30 years. I just held the bottle of Oxy's in my hand. I go, I'm good on this. Okay. I don't even have it in me to go through this. Wow, I'm proud. That's great. Good for you. Like what it would take, if I took one Oxy, the the amount of like it would bullshit, be, like the, the life that I would now have to create. It would be 2023 all over again. It would be 2023 It'd for be the, the rest darkness. of my life. Yeah, like, which is like 2023 was enough. <laughs> yeah. Like just the amount of like bullshit structures you have to put in place to support a lifestyle like that. I go, I can't do it. Yeah. No. Good. Wow. 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 I'll tell you what I did do though. What? We got my mom some weed gummies. Okay. You dip and in she, those? So I took one. Okay. So I gave her hers and then I go, I'll take the other half. Yeah. Why not? I go, why, it's harmless. Why, but sure. Okay. I never do weed. Hear me when I say I never do weed. She has boundaries. Okay. I got so high. So me, so I'm supposed to be in charge. Cut to like 35 minutes later. I took my, I have my, I have my mom's blanket. I'm laying on the Drooling couch next to her. Drooling a puddle of drool. And cannot stay awake. Yeah. And she's shivering. She's like, I need you to change the drains. And I'm like. Gotta milk those drains, yeah. baby. Gotta milk those Gotta drains. milk the drains. My goodness. Um, what did I want to ask you? Oh, yeah. As a nurse, did you ever currently or in the past watch medical shows like Grey's Anatomy and stuff or is that not even something nurses watch um I loved Nurse Jackie okay I think Nurse Jackie is one of the more honest and real depictions of what it's like to be a nurse of having to go home and first off I you know I, I'm from Jersey so you know I love um I love Edie Falco Cormel yeah. Soprano um but um I think that's a real accurate portrayal of, you know, nursing has a lot of addiction, a lot of like broken homes, layers of that, you know, you're, you go from this extreme of like, um, on such high alert and you don't know how to not be on high alert. And then you, all you want to do is unwind. And then you're going home to kind of also be that mother, right? Like in, in her, in her, um, 
role and, you know, be the wife and be whatever. And it's, it, it's it, all the caretaking. It like never stops and anticipating for everyone. Like it, it, it's a very accurate portrayal of, uh, of nursing and just, you know, of kind of sometimes just like making it through the day. And I think a lot of how toxic and just the mental health, like nurses are in fight or flight, like the, right. the like they're, they don't stop. Right. You know? Okay. It seemed like my nurses were in fight, flight or dance girl. <laughs> <laughs> you had a crew. I did love them. God love them. God love the boys. <laughs> yeah. You had the, uh, you no, had, but at 100%. You had the Zoom yeah. nurses. It's got to be. I'm thinking about it, a lot of the nurse, like this is terrifying. A lot of the nurses right now, like, they went to Zoom school because <gasps> no. of during the pandemic. Yeah. That's their Zoom nurses. Their Zoom nurses. <gasps> and trust me, you know. Oh, no. Oh, no. You're so right. They were Zoom- I cannot wait to tell my mom this is like a whole thing. All right. Have you ever like had to do that thing where you're like, he's coding and then someone died? Yeah. Oh. And then you're like, do we want Chipotle or Taco Bell? Right. And you yeah. have to go immediately back to. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny. To, it's not funny. Like, so we, you've had someone die in you. Oh, yeah. A lot. I okay. work in oncology. Like, yeah. But also, I worked prior to that. I worked in cardiac. But oh, that's, it, yeah. it was very interesting to me when, um, do you remember that um, football player? I don't like know who Demar it was. Damar Hamlin. The guy who, Bills. who coded at like basically yes. had, to, they do CPR on him. Yes. And it was wild to me. And it was a big window into realizing like, Tick, like the internet, TikTok, Instagram was talking about that for like a good week. Mm-hmm. And when TikTok and Instagram was talking about something for a week, you know what I mean? It's usually like pretty big deal. And um, it was interesting to see how seeing CPR being done messed up so many people. And like in the comments, how they were like, oh my God, that was so traumatic to see. That was such a like, you know, that still got me messed up. And it's mm-hmm. like, sometimes we see that like eight, nine times a day. Right. And then you have to like do that. And then go for the patient. I mean, great. Thank God he, he made it and the guy's yeah. alive, but it, sometimes the patient dies and then you got to go to like the next room and someone's like, can't find their remote. Right. right. <laughs> and you're like, I'm unpacking a lot. Like I'm dealing with a lot right now. Right. Totally. You know what I mean? And then, yeah. And then you got someone in your ear, like we're putting the lunch order in. Right. What do you want? The so thing- it's a lot of like, yeah, you, you think about like the highs and lows. It's a lot of highs and lows. I remember for that game you were talking about, that Bills game, one of the big things people were like, this has never happened before, where they didn't continue the game. So people were mad about that? No, they were just like, this has never happened before. Usually people have like gone down and like on cardiac arrest on the field before and they go back to playing the okay. game. And then they saw but, Yeah, I think, yeah, but because you now, watch someone get God, CPR. Yeah. yeah, so. Um, yeah, I, don't, I just knew that like when I was seeing it on, on the internet, I was just kind of like, wow, like people are really messed up by this. And then it was like, like I said, it was like an introspective thing for me to be like, wow, you deal with this and have to go back to work and then have to come home and do laundry and like be an adult. At, like there's and, and here are the like people who just watched it right. are still unpacking it a week later. And it's like you're doing this 12 hours a day, sometimes three, four days in a row. Have you ever been in a situation where someone screams out, is there a nurse? And you answer the call. I, I was in a situation, no one screamed out, is there a nurse? But someone screamed out, he's dead. Oh, no. <laughs> and I, it's so funny. Like I just say, you know, I'm from Jersey, so we say it's funny a lot, but it's, you know, you laugh at it now in the, in the moment it was not. Anyway, I was on a plane going to France and everything that could have went wrong before the flight did. I didn't have like paperwork that I needed. It was like post COVID, like all the things supposed to have, like whatever. It was just a mess the woman who helped me on the flight get it cleared me was like so nice. And I was like, thank you so much. You're an actual angel. And she's like, and you're crazy, like foreshadowing. She's like, it's okay. One day you'll have to be nice to someone. And I'm like, I bet you're nice to people all day. I'm a nurse. Right. Anyway, but I got on the flight. I was finally like rested asleep. And all of a sudden I hear, oh my God, he's dead. Mm-hmm. And of course, like I jump up, I have my earplugs in, I pull them out. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? I see like a little thing happening in the front of the plane. And I'm like, do I get involved? Do I not? Like, what do I do? So of course I like get up there and then there's a guy there. There's a guy slumped in the chair in the seat and uh, there's a man and he's like, I think he's dead. And he goes, oh my God, he's dead. And I, I just am like, this is a millennial nurse now. Right. I go, nah, not yet. Uh, and then I just like <laughs> push her out of the way. And you go, first of all, does anyone have a hair tie? <laughs> Second of all, I got to get to work. So yeah, I had to like basically save this guy's life on the plane. And I remember looking at the flight so attendant. What, what was the protocol? Um, protocol was, uh, I looked at the flight attendant. The first thing I said was like, oh, we may have to land this plane. <gasps> and she goes, we can't, we're over the ocean. 
So I was kind of like, you got to do your thing or yeah. we're going to throw a sheet you over say it's You say it's Dr. D now. And then okay. so I was like, are there any doctors on the plane? <laughs> like, because I needed an assist. Right. The guy over like here is like, well, I'm a dentist. And I was like, yeah, your buddy. <laughs> get, you know. I'm a vet. <laughs> yeah. I'm a veterinarian. I'm like, I'm good. I would have taken a vet. I would have I would have taken, taken, taken a military vet. We should have dealt with a heart before. Oh. So dentist, I was like, buddy, you're good. Sit down. Um, so and, who'd you get? So it was just me. By myself. You didn't get an assistant? No assistant. I love, I love the details then of the, how this goes down. And then the flight attendant's in my ear. We can't land. I'm like, okay, I'm trying to figure out what's wrong with them. Then the flight attendant, um, they give you these bags that the best way I can describe it is they look like pencil pouches, like a okay. pencil case. And I don't know what's in them because like I don't work for Delta. Right. And so I start, I'm like, I need a blood pressure cuff. She's like, what do you need? I'm like, get me everything you have. Like, just bring it. Like, I, right. there's no time to be like, oh, hey, like just right. dump it next to me. Yeah. And so I get everything and then I don't know what's in these bags. So I go to start opening them and she's like, no, 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 don't open the bag unless you need it because then we got to do paperwork. And I'm like, that's <gasps> what Bitch. And I was no. like, but in my head, I'm like, I get it. I like, get it. That's it's how it is in the hospital too. Like you're like, don't touch that unless we got to really use it because we have to fill out 10 forms. So I was like, I respect this. Right. Um, Cause you know, so then anyway, it turned out that um, this gentleman uh, slammed all his blood pressure medications before the flight. I finally get him too. Like I, you know, um, I, I was like, oh, I think he might be having a triple A, which is an abdominal aortic aneurysm. That was like my, that's the first thing I went to. And I like, cause we, as nurses, we work worst case to best case, right? I rather think you're going to die and it'd only be a sore throat than me being like, oh, you have a sore throat. And then me missing what the life threatening thing could be. So first thing is I'm like, I think maybe he's having a triple A, which is an abdominal aortic aneurysm. Anyway, I finally get him to, I have to like basically get him out of the seat. I do blood pressure on him. I find a pulse. The pulse is weak and thready. Like go through the whole thing. And mm-hmm. then I have to basically, I'm like, we got to get his feet above his heart because his blood pressure is like dropping. I got it. Like we got to get the blood to right. return. So after I get him to, um, I asked him, I said, you know, what's up? We start talking. He's kind of like trying to like, he's very, you know, he's just passed out on a plane. Like, mm-hmm. you know, turned out he slammed all his blood pressure meds. I look at him. I go, did you drink? Mm-hmm. And he goes, yeah, I had a whiskey. I go, was it a double? Mm-hmm. And he goes, oh yeah. And I was like, how much water did you drink? None, because I didn't want to have to pay. So like <laughs> you slammed two whiskeys, you right. took all your blood pressure meds that you should have taken over the course of the day. You slammed right. all like, so he basically bottomed out. He made himself, um, he, you know, he made his blood pressure too low and, and he passed out. He was but, on the flight. But if you had not intervened, would he have passed? Let's say yes. I mean, yeah. Let's sure. say yes. Yeah, I like that. Absolutely. Now, what kind of thanks did you get for something like that? What's it? I'm so glad you asked this <laughs> yeah. follow-up question. Go I got a bottle of champagne from Delta One. Okay. That the flight attendant just took and handed <laughs> okay. me. Okay. And then I got a hundred dollar voucher. I probably saved them over half a million dollars in having an emergency land a plane yeah. in another and, and, in the, in and the redirect. Sea? Or we would have had to land in like Portugal or the yeah, first was place. Sully the, was Sully the captain? No. And um, yeah. So I was kind of like, wow, a hundred bucks. I Yeah. We'll take it. But he was very grateful. And, and, and to make a long story short, he ended up um, having an abdominal aortic aneurysm that he had, but it was stable. And so then the dentist is like, how'd you know that? And I'm like, well, because I'm not a dentist. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, I'm a real medical professional. Okay. That's why we kept you on the yeah. side, buddy. Because you told me he needed orange juice. <laughs> Meanwhile, the guy's like foaming at his mouth and like, I don't want him to choke on his own. Like, situ- I thought he was aspirated, like, wow. you know, vomiting up. So, yeah, but yeah. And then, but it was so funny. And that's just like, how'd you know? It's like, bitch. Good, good diagnostician here, buddy. I'm, my blood pressure might be very down right now. I yeah, am going totally in I... and consciousness a little bit. Yeah? Yeah, a little bit. But that's I was baseline. getting dizzy on the way over. We got pump. So what am I supposed to do? Put my legs up? You should put them over your heart for some blood return. You could do like some squats and pump them to get the blood Here's what happened, going. folks. I'm on. My, here we go. I, I am balding, as we know. And yeah. so I'm on two. They put me on two different blood I pressure want you, medications. I, I'm going to have a doctor balding. that I, I want you to go to. And I want you okay. to get like real good labs and like get a good workup. Okay. You have a doctor? Yeah. Great. I'll go. Okay. We're going to get you checked out. Let's play Because you're going to be a star and I need you to live for a long time. So you I can agree. take care of me. So when you have a pool in the Hamptons, you will invite me. Because yeah, I you... always said, here's the clip, that she will be a star. Here's the clip. Clip here's it. Here's the clip. <laughs> uh, but you can't get to the Hamptons if you have low blood pressure like me. Because I don't even have high blood pressure. Now I'm on three different blood pressure medications. Yeah, this, I, I'm this really, can't be I have right. concern about a lot they of They gave this. me one blood pressure medication to take if I feel anxious but ever since i stopped vaping and drinking iced red eyes i don't have anxiety so we can take that so we can take that one one out yeah and then they gave me spirolactone which is a yeah we we chew i I, and minoxidil okay oral which are both blood pressure medications for balding bitches 
Okay. But there's other things we could be doing. Yeah, we could be. I mean, Nutrafol could suck my balls. All right. Let's let's play Name That Ailment. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> You're the nurse. I come in and I say that I have fatigue, weakness, thirst, headache, muscle aches, nausea, vertigo, sensitivity to light and sound, and increased blood pressure. What do you think I have? Say it again. Wait, say it again. Sorry. Basically, okay. Fatigue, weakness, uh-huh. muscle aches, stomach pain, vertigo, sensitivity to light and sound, increased blood pressure. <laughs> this could be 150 different things. It could be 150 different things. Diabetes? Hangover. Ha- I mean, <laughs> you said the thirst. I mean, it's like, a hangover. <laughs> it's a hangover. It's. <laughs> I just Googled. <laughs> I mean, that could be a hundred things. That could be like mono. It could be vertigo. It could be a brain tumor. It could be like I know. beginning diabetes. It could. I mean, like it's a hundred things that like okay the ready? thirst through me. Ready? Yeah. Bullseye rash. Lyme's disease. You got it on the first one. Yeah, I yeah. That was because yeah, that disease. was actually like a real like that was Lyme's disease. First off, if you came into my ER with a hangover, I'd be like, get the fuck out of here. I'm wasting so many people's. Time. I did go into an ER with a hangover one time. I actually texted you. You diagnosed me with a concussion. You said go to the hospital. Well, I, that's because I said I was at the St. John concert at Terminal Five last night. and I took a spill and I'm not feeling so good. Right, because you I said I got tumble. so drunk I fell and hit my head. Yes, correct. And I don't remember. Correct. So I was like, con- <laughs> like again, we work from worst case. Right. So what? So the worst. So case in that is case, worst concussion. case would have been a worst case would have been a stroke. You hit your head mm-hmm. and you got a bleed. My goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just a hangover, folks. So second. Would it be concussion? You know, we'd look at a concussion or, mm-hmm. you know, like, but yeah. And then last, just hang over. And then you're like, what? This bitch fucking wasted everybody's time. That's what. Yeah. That's me. Yeah. That's me. And at that time, I was on Medicaid. So I wasted all your money as well. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, I need, a, I need an MRI. I need a scan. I need a scan. I need a scan. I right can't now. believe you wasted an MRI check. But again, you hit your head. So you have to work it okay, up. Because I if think, you were the okay, person here's, who hit your head now, and they didn't work it up, you would have been suing them. Now we know I love a conspiracy, but I'm going to say here what I go. believe. Here I believe that they, did, I, I believe they did a fake cat scan on okay, me. Okay, here we go. I'll tell you why. Sure, tell me. I came I'm into dying. the hospital with my hood up, right, and the things. They put me on that machine. They did not tell me to take my hood off. Yeah, okay. It's a cat scan. It can see, you don't think it can see through your fucking skin. You don't think it can see through a hoodie? I don't know. It just didn't seem like up to code. I go, I go. They're just humoring me. They're doing a fake cat scan. I know it. You want to hear a funny story about a cat scan? Yeah. When I broke my arm, the cat scan guy was trying to flirt with me so uh-huh. badly and I have like my arm and I'm like wincing I, like I was in such pain they didn't even believe it was broke I requested the cat scan that's how we found out it was broke because I showed them on the x-ray where my arm was broke they were ready to send me home mm-hmm. and then um I'm doing the cat scan and as I'm like literally going you know as it like like as you go back into yeah. it I'm like the guy's like I don't know how these pictures are gonna co- how did he say he's like I'm not sure how your images are gonna come out but uh you're mad photogenic <gasps> <laughs> and I was just like with my little like half that broke rocks. and I so it like I do my scans I do whatever then he helps me like back on the stretcher because like I have a broken arm so I'm like I can't piss this guy off right because I gotta like like I need him like I'm right. not gonna get him mad right now and so he gets me back on the stretcher and then he's like you all good and he's like putting the gurney thing up and I go listen we're gonna go back to the emergency room I go whatever like that little photograph comment was I get it. I'm married though. I said, and you need to cut it before we get back to the ER. Oh, I, thought- my, I go, my husband will kick your ass so badly that you'll be the next one in the CAT scan. And he's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I don't know. You. And I'm like, yeah. I was like, also, I'm a nurse. Like, what are you doing flirting with me? Like, yeah. I just like handled it, but. I thought that's where it was going somewhere else. But was- I thought you were going to go, when we get back to that ER room, let me oh, yeah. tell you what we're about to do, baby. <laughs> All right. So at some point you said nursing is not enough. What did I say this? You're not, not on my podcast, but in your life. Okay. You said it's not enough. Okay. It's not We're enough. doing the montage I need now? to do something me, else. Like, you said yeah, I need to do coming something home, else. bad day, putting the bag down. Like, and you said, I need, I need an outlet. I need an outlet. I need some creativity. So you started something called the Donnas. Now, where are we I at did. now with the Donnas? The Donnas is a- you just morphed it into something else. Right? I kind of like I'm doing, I'm kind of like doing a lot more of like, uh, the Donna started about like food and stuff. And now I'm doing a lot more of like me, like, you know, more content and interviews and things like that. And, and kind of stepping out of it, the Donna's, um, I felt like really served its purpose during the pandemic. And it was like a very community type, um, thing. And, uh, I have some plans for it of what it's going to turn into, but, um, you know, 
got to, when you do those pitches, you got to, you can't really be talking about it on podcasts. You got to wait until, yeah. you know, the industry says you're worthy or not. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's I, I'll I come right on here and say everything I'm about to say in my pitch, but that's why <laughs> I'm, you know. <laughs> but uh, now it's kind of a shop and um, it's basically kind of like the vibe is like self-care Sunday, but every day. So creating, um, you know, things, planners, um, we do courses, uh, have like things like candles, st- clothing, things that really just kind of make you feel like your best self and help you with uh, your journey and self-care and, and just kind of like figuring out your best life. Yeah. We're going to have, so you're also into astrology and stuff. I am. Yeah. And so we're, Manifesting we're, astrology. we're blessed to be, um, you and I, the cardinal we're signs. We're going to have a good year. We're okay, going to have so a good explain 30 to the years. Okay. Tell them. So the cardinal signs, which is, um, Capricorn, Aries, Cancer, Libra, mm-hmm. um, we have had since 2008, it's been, it's been a situation for us. Real situation. It's been like five steps forward, 35 steps back, Mm -hmm. two steps forward, Mm -hmm. 10 steps back. Like we've really been in the seesaw of like, like I, like for some people it's like, I can't even believe they're still standing. Like we've really like Mm -hmm. been hit with it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it was about shadow work, dealing with what, how you hold yourself back, not doing the blame game, kind of being like, I'm responsible for this and kind of figuring out like kind of what you can do. And right. how you can pull it off. And so uh, this year, we're kind of out of that cycle. And we're stepping into like 30 years of like yeah. greatness. Wow. Yeah. It's so crazy because as as our listeners know, I've been in a great mood. You same me too. I feel like I like okay. December 31st to January 1st, I feel like it was like someone, I don't know, just took the like a weighted blanket off of me. Same. I feel- It started with my strep throat. Mm-hmm. It changed my life. Really? That's when the planets or the cardinal signals or whatever shifted for me. Okay. I got a good nap in. Okay. I finally slept. Uh I haven't vaped since then. This is great. We're on 40 days about no vape. Can you believe that? Just checking in on my vape. You should have a little ticker about that. I know. I am smoking cigs though. Okay. Well, that's not as bad. Why am I talking about this? Oh yeah. This is when I felt the weighted blanket come off. Yeah. I felt like a layer of me finally just like I could breathe and it just, I didn't feel so smothered by myself. Smothered by myself. Such a good way to put it. Right. Yeah. I mean, pretty much everyone's like wants me to do well and I just, I'm like, I will refuse to do well. Yeah. Say, I'm, I'm going <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm to I'm show you. Yeah. It's <laughs> like, and also I think for me, I don't know about you, but for me also like not having to be this rebel just because. Totally. Because it's like a lot, like, and I'm not even like a bigger, like you, you're more, a lot more rebel. Not than really. Me. Not really? You don't think? I just smoke. What else do I do that's bad? You're, I mean, you're a wild one. A little bit. Yeah. So, I mean, your concussion, you know, at the concert, all things. Sally. Um, going to the ER for a hangover. But um, I think I finally was kind of like, you, you don't have to resist so much just because, like, because you're, hold, you're holding yourself back at this point. Yeah. Like, and, and you can ask for help and you can, you know, you don't have to be so hard with, like, so, def- I don't know, like, I, I kind of, I put up this block so I don't have to get hurt. Mm-hmm. It's like, I'll hurt myself before you get yeah. the opportunity and, to. And all that does is just make you more hurt. Is yeah, what does. I realized. I go, oh, I just hurt myself. Okay. Because yeah, especially like you just said, there's a lot of people who love me. Yeah, I'm so And are in my corner, like who want me to like, who are like, who see it in me and are like, girl, you got it. Like, go do it. And I'm like, no, I don't. And I'm like, no, "No, I don't. No, I'm scared. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) But it's you. I know. It's you and you got to get over you. I know. You got to learn how to become friends with yourself. Like I I had to learn how to start treating myself the way that I would be there in someone's corner for a friend. Right. And that's kind of what this, and this year is going to be a little bit difficult because this year is going to come in hot. Whoa, 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 whoa. I thought it was going to be good. It's going to be great. But the problem is we've gotten so comfortable with like, things not working out for us uh-huh. that we're going to have to catch ourselves and kind of be like, no, it's working out. Like it's good. Yes. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like I, I just sold out, I'm doing this comedy show called trauma dump and um, it's a show when that is it? it's this Sunday, but it's going to be it, probably, this will come out Tuesday. It'll, so it'll be, it's going to be very often, hopefully. Yeah. But um, it was like an idea and I told the stand about it and it was like, okay, cool, let's do it. And I'm like, why isn't, why is everybody for this? So what do you mean? Let's do it. And then I ask every comedian who I asked to be on it. And they were like, I would love to do this. And I'm like, everyone said yes. And I'm like, fuck. And then, you know, I'm like, but don't do it, Donna. Don't do it. And then even like looking at the tickets, I'm like, holy fuck, we sold out. Mm. But it's like, no, this is a good thing. This is what you want to be happening. Totally. So, yeah, it's I, I got to stop getting in my own way. I feel like um, it's hard for me to accept that there's nothing wrong sometimes. Because I think that's, I've just been conditioned to be like, 
Or for me, I in think- In chaos? Yes, I since thrive. Since I was a I mean, child? I, yeah, same thing with me. I'm a nurse. I thrive in chaos. Yeah. So when it's calm, I'm so nervous. That's when I go to hypochondria. Or sometimes that's when I have to like kick the bucket over and be like, oh, look, so we made a mess. See, yeah. I told you there's going to be a mess. I go, I'm and filled I with tumors. I'm filled with tumors. <laughs> yes, Does anybody intru- want to check this? The intrusive Cut thoughts. Cut me open, I will be filled with tumors. I guarantee it. The intrusive thoughts come in. And I'm learning. And one of the biggest things for me in 2023 was I finally have been able to figure out what's my intuition versus what is an intrusive thought. <gasps> Tell me. Tell me right now. Intrusive tell me right thoughts, now what you're saying. I'm filled with tumors or okay. I'm doing so well, something's going to go wrong. Of course. Like, oh, but I shouldn't go to work today because God forbid I get into an accident. Like that's intrusive yeah. thoughts, right? Okay. Intuition comes in calm and easy and intuition is being in the shower and it's like, you should do a comedy show called Trauma Dump mm-hmm. and it comes in so easy and so fast. Or when you're driving or you're walking and doing like one of your hot girl walks mm-hmm. and you're like, you know, oh yeah, that, this is a great joke. But, oh, that's a good pitch. This is a good idea for a show. Right. And it just comes in nice and easy. That's mm-hmm. your higher self. That's a download. That's source, you know, God, whatever you believe in. Um, but that's you being in flow and that's you, that's, that's intuition. That's a download. That's, right. that's what, where we all want to be. Yeah. Then the intrusive thought would be, that's never going to be good. That's going to be terrible. They're going to make fun of you. Or what then about this? Like, what about that? Yeah. You're going to get made fun of. Then you, I've kind of learned to give that voice a name. Okay. And I'll be like, I call it Dan. <laughs> and I'm like, Dan, fuck you, buddy. Wow. We're not doing this. And I that helps a lot because it's just me. I should give my voice a name. And then you just, you know. Tony Blair. There you go. <laughs> Tony Blair. Tony Blair, I don't have time for this right Tony now. Tony Blair, I don't have time for you right now, bro. Yeah, Tony Blair, go back to whatever yeah. you're doing. I do get struck with those feelings sometimes. Intuition or intrusive thoughts? Intuitions. Yeah. I'm struck with them. You get str- It's like, for me, it feels like... um kind of like a, and I'm going to age myself, but like a coin going in a pay phone. It's like a clunk. Like, I feel like yeah. it just whoops in, you know? I almost always do the thing it tells me to do though. You sh- you should. I'm learning to trust more because One again- One time I had a feeling, go go check, go to your grandpa's house, check on your grandpa. And what happened? He was dead. Wow. See? Yeah. Or like, um, the night I ran into the, my boyfriend again, even though I'd already known him. The really good looking one. Yeah. I said- He's very dreamy. I said, stand outside. I said, don't go yet to myself. Wow. I said, just stand outside. That happened to me with meeting my husband. Isn't that crazy? No, it's not because that happened with me meeting my husband. Then, I, went, I went back to the dorm and fell asleep. And then- Back to the dorm. <laughs> listen, when, you know, when you find your soulmate, you find your soulmate. This is my problem. <laughs> okay. okay. When you yeah, lived so a lot of lives, okay, you know, so we found each other again. Okay. okay. Don't ruin my love story here. Okay. I went back to the dorm, went to go to sleep. My roommate comes in and she's like, uh, you want to go to this party? And- I was already, I was, I was in REM and I'm like, yeah, let's go. And then I literally got up in like, I was wearing a, a, a tank, like an A-line tee and boxer shorts. And she's like, are you going to get changed? I'm like, no, let's just go. I, I can't waste any time. I got to go to this party. And he was there. That's so cool. There you go. Fell in love, you know? See, if you believe it, you got to follow. And I had said things. the day before, I was like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to date that guy. And I didn't even know his name. I didn't know anything about him. Wow. I saw him on stage talking and I heard him say his name. My name's Alexis. And I was like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to meet him. I'm going to talk to him. Wow. And that was it. And there you go. Next day manifested. Manifested. All right. Let's take it out with this. Go ahead. Tips and tricks for manifesting. Or you could give me your top three man of things you've ever manifested. I think you just gave us one. Husband. Yeah. Okay. You manifested. Um, tips, tips and tricks for manifesting. You have to. When you man, when you're trying to manifest something, you have to tap into something, the reticular activating system of your brain, which is you can go on my website, donagreros.com. It's all like uh, it's like I live for this. But when you're manifesting, you have to say it, believe it, and feel it. Mm-hmm. So people will do one of the three, but you kind of have to figure out how to simultaneously do all three. So it's kind of like you visualize it. So say it's like Frex is going to sell her pitch. And it's like, I'm going to sell my pitch. I'm, and you have to like, you have to like daydream it. Like you have yeah. to see it actually happening, playing it out. You, you getting the phone call. Yeah, who you, are you going to tell first? Who are you going to tell first? Yeah, oh my God, signing it. the contract. Yeah. But see, you did that part of it. Now you have to say, as you're thinking it, you have to say it out loud. Oh, okay. And at the same time, you kind of have to feel it in your heart space. And so if something really, ex- like if, if someone called you right now and said, Frex, you sold the pitch, mm-hmm. what would it feel like inside your body? Amazing. You have to feel that, say it, and right. think it all at the same time. So it's kind of yeah. like, yeah. you know, it's like chewing gum and like hitting your head and rubbing your stomach at the same time. It's like, you got to get it all going. 
yeah. and you have to really believe it and, yeah. and you have to do it more than once. And then when you put it out there and then you have to say, I'm open to this or something greater because so many times we want to like control the narrative and we want to Scorsese it. But it's like, how many times have you wanted something in your life and you wanted it so bad? And then five, 10 years later, you're like, oh, thank God I didn't get that because I would be doing X, Y, Z. Like if my, if the Donna's took off when I started all this and I I got it how I wanted it, it would be all about food right now. It would be, you know, and like so many people are doing food so much better than me and, and so many people belong in that space and I don't. And there's more for me and I know that. And I can genuinely sit across from you and be like, it's really about the process of it. Right. It's not the final destination because so many different things are going to happen along the way. So just being open to, you know, because, yeah, you might sell the pitch and then it might not go anywhere. 100%. But, you know, maybe it'll turn, you know, this is another idea you can workshop or the person you're going to present to is going to be like, hey, we hate your pitch, but fucking we want to put you in this movie. You're great. Yeah. Like you don't know. So be open to whatever exactly. is better for you. This or something greater. Yeah. This is a great convo. Thank, Thank you. you so much for coming. Now you have to go to Roth's. I do have to go and, and go to dinner. Yeah. That's why I'm, I'm in my Eight mob, nights a week, baby. My mob life aesthetic. I'm trying. And my, with me and my little, uh, you know, oh. my cold sores are going around. Yeah. So be careful. I too am afflicted with the cold sores. But you know, it's like. Many out there suffer. And I just want you to know that I know at least 60 to 70% of my audience is probably afflicted. And I just want you to know. I time to end this, the stigma. I think this might be a good time for you to get a sponsorship. A Breva. Holler. Yeah. Okay. Valtrex, holler. <laughs> holler at your girl. Get that money, Frex. All right. Follow Donna. Check out her website. Go see her shows at the stand. It sounds like she'll be doing a bunch more. You're the best. Thank yeah. you for coming. Thank you so much, buddy. Appreciate you. You're doing great things. See you next week, hoes. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs>